Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy hump day. Yeah. Happy hump day, Stevie. <laughs> hey, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Good. Doing well. Good. Yes. So there's a lot going on again, right? It is. A lot yeah. of exciting things yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. So what you got going on? Well, <clears throat> today I wore um, this shirt because this is the shirt for my dad's band. Oh, sweet um, dream. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the name of his his current band. And so, because I knew tomorrow was T Boy Thursday, mm -hmm. so I couldn't wear this shirt tomorrow. But um, I am excited because tomorrow I'll be going to Durham to see the documentary that he's his band Funk House, which is an older band. Um, is in oh, so wow. it's called they say i'm different and it's the story of betty davis who was miles davis's um ex-wife at a point okay. and so they were at um just it was a great movement in the funk music mm -hmm. industry and so i'm excited about that because i was there for some of the taping of the documentary i think that was about two or three years ago oh wow and so it's become um something where uh, english gentleman came from England and actually um, discovered Betty Davis because she had been gone for like she disappeared for like huh. 20 years huh. and nobody knew where she was wow. so she they did that and so they launched in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. this documentary and then I missed it in New York and Pittsburgh so I'm going to Durham mm -hmm. and I just look forward to seeing the documentary for one and I look forward to hearing the music for two because I've never seen Funk House wasn't around when I was old enough to understand Sweet Dreams has been together for like uh, 30 years. Wow, so, that is great. I've known Sweet Dreams. Yeah. So it's like um, just an exciting time for my dad. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing seeing this documentary, learning more about him as a musician, learning more about Betty Davis and hearing them play. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm and excited. it's always good to be able to spend time with your dad. Yeah. Right? And it's funny, I haven't, I didn't realize I hadn't seen him since Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. <laughs> Time flies. Time does so, fly. I'm looking forward to it. So that's, that's the exciting thing going on with me. Um, lots of exciting things always happening. I think life is just exciting when you live it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Life and you're just, living your fullest yeah. life right now. Yeah. So, so you're I, not speaking somewhere, you're here. <laughs> you it's know. awesome. And you guys, I had fun. We had fun yesterday, <laughs> you and I. So uh -huh. we just, explored Grandin yeah, yesterday. Yes. So that was nice. You know, they had things going on in Grandin that I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> yes. So. It's like its own little niche, own little community. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. And there's some really cool things yeah. out there. You know? Yes. Yeah, so. I think sometimes here, a lot of people get stuck in their area yeah. and they don't take the time to yeah. venture out when there's so much going on here. You just yeah. got to take the time to do it. I it's go not far. It's right here. It's pretty much <laughs> 10 minutes to get yep. to anywhere. So and you met your name twin yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody so. else had my name and they spelled it the same yes. way. And yes. Yeah. It was just amazing. It was oh a good, God. it was just a good time to actually see because I had never seen a lot of that stuff. I had seen right. some of the stuff, but not all not that we all saw it. yesterday. So I think that was cool. Just and you're right. People need to get outside their neighborhood. I know Charlotte is good for that, like because it's so big. Right. But Roanoke, we got people got to do better because Roanoke is definitely not the size of Charlotte. Exactly. And Charlotte, like one side of town may not know about what's on the other side because they have all their all their stuff together. So. Mm -hmm. They don't have to really worry about that, but I think always exploring is good. You gotta exploring know what's in your city. city. You gotta know what's in your city. Now, I haven't taken the time to get out to Salem. I, yeah, I wanna go. I so. definitely wanna go to Salem soon. Teach on that good jerk mm -hmm. food everybody's talking about. All right, and we'll be right back. Have you ever asked yourself, how do I show up in the world? How do I leave my mark? How do I get up every day and be the best I can be? It all starts with a mindset. The mindset to keep pushing through all adversity to wear the titles of confidence, self-reliance, 
and eternally beautiful. It all starts from within. Think, feel, be. Conceded in partnership with UPL presents our third annual Networking in the City, Grow Your Network to Grow Your Net Worth, a nonprofit event that will benefit Apple Ridge Farm and UBU Back to School Drive. Hosted by me, Vernice Bell, and my co-host is Justin Hash, Saturday, June 30th, 5 to 9 p.m. Music will be powered by the one and only DJ Kid. Dressed to impress, 21 and over, I welcome. Bring your business cards. We will have guest speakers and door prizes. At Century Plaza Park, 14 Church Avenue, Southeast Roanoke, Virginia, 24011. For more information, you can email us at networkingthecity at gmail.com or call us at 540-353-1770 or check us out on Facebook. The third annual Networking in the City Social is not always what you know, sometimes it's who you know. We're back, we're back, we're back. <laughs> so I'm just kind of Googling through the news right now. And Yahoo is saying, Yahoo Finance, the 10 most in-demand jobs in the U.S. are, let me get to them, registered nurses. Mm -hmm. I'm always saying mm -hmm. registered nurses, mm -hmm. right? They seem to have a shortage of nurses mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, software developers, supervisors of retail sales workers, customer service reps, heavy and tractor trailer truck, truck drivers, computer user support specialists, sales representatives, maintenance and repair workers, retail salespersons, and network and computer systems administration. Mm. Now, I'm surprised with all this customer service and retail stuff <laughs> because it's number one, a lot of stuff has been being sold on mm -hmm. online, right? So a lot of stores are closing mm -hmm. retail in general. And then customer service, it seems like all those jobs are in another country for yeah. the most part. Yeah. I know. So. Um, what's the place? Amazon is always looking for reps. Mm -hmm. They're always looking for reps. And it's definitely, I think now they're working more at home. Like you could work at home and do all that kind of stuff. So I think that the more e-commerce grows, then they'll be looking for people. Okay. And I think the, yeah, the retail one, I think they're always, like I don't ever feel like somebody is, gonna be a hundred percent like online with their shopping so I guess they still need those people and I think a lot of older people try to get those jobs and you know college students high school students try to get those jobs so I think that they'll be they'll be somewhere but I'm it didn't I don't know how it's gonna increase I feel like it's going to be more of a um, place because I don't think people are going to really build new stores right but I think it's always gonna be a need for people to be in the stores right okay Okay, so for everybody's info out there, if you're looking for a job, try some retail, try some customer service, um, computer support, and if you want to go back to school and become an RN, there's plenty of RNs mm -hmm. needed. So, so Stevie, what's going on Facebook this morning? I saw um, this amazing quote. Okay. On, um, this Stormy Wellington, she is 
uh, amazing woman in business. Mm -hmm. And so she said, some people refuse to celebrate you because you have grown beyond the limits that they gave you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how myself and our producer Raheem, we were like, that's deep. That is deep. <laughs> that was like... But that holds a lot of truth. Yeah. If you really think about it. People yeah. put their limits on you and... They want, and it's funny, people want you to do good, but not that good. You know? They don't ever want you to do better than <laughs> yes. them, right? Yes, and that's crazy. It's like, um, it's on another level. <laughs> and, you know, we could get ahead so much better if we work together yeah. than separate, you know? And really understand people's values. Like, there's some stuff that... I don't want to do, will not do, mm -hmm. that I'm just not great at. It's not in my it factor, but there are some things that other people do that they're willing. And I think exactly. the, the shining thing for me and the pivotal moment for me was when I realized that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you're groomed to be great at everything. Like you have to think of, that's the way people, especially only child, you think you have to be great at, at everything. everything. Yeah. But the reality is that there are some things that you're just not gonna be great as as great as in other areas. Mm -hmm. Like I'm good at a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean I'm great at a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you understand, when everybody understands that, then we can like, like Tommy always says, together everyone achieves more because right. I'm not trying to do your part, you're not trying to do my part, we're trying to all bring it to the table. And so I think people just have to do a, some self-check, self-awareness and understand, and understand even if you're doing the same thing, like there are other authors, speakers and coaches, it's not, I'm not the only one in the world, mm -hmm. but if you understand how great you are as a person and where you dwell, then you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and maybe that's just being comfortable with who you are instead of trying to be something else, you know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people want to be everything to everybody mm -hmm. and just be yes. what you're be supposed you. to be. Do you, yeah. boo. And hello to all these great people. Um, Celine said, Good morning, senoritas. I was speaking a little bit of Spanish early. Hola. <laughs> Good morning. Karen Mill says, great morning. Hey, hey, hey. Miss hey. Judy. Miss Judy. Miss Judy. <laughs> How you doing? And so, yes. Hi, Tommy mm -hmm. and Farmer. Hey, Jacoby. <laughs> and Saria <laughs> Vision of Vine is checking on in. Okay, She's okay. She's a compiler of you have no idea the hell I've been through. So, okay. hello, Miss Avant. <laughs> Well, I do want to talk a little bit about your other book yes. because today um, is National HIV yes. Testing Day. We had a show about it yesterday. Uh, you can go to Walgreens on Williamson Road today and they are testing out there until I believe it is 4 p.m. Um, and we had, you know, some discussions about HIV and mm -hmm. as we discussed it, Stevie mentioned that there is an author that she knows that actually is living with it. So we were going to talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. One of my dearest friends, Alicia, um, she always says lovely digs. So because she's Lee, Alicia mm -hmm. digs. And so she was talking. Well, I know for sure she's a woman who is living vivaciously with HIV. And so I wanted to read a tad bit from what she wrote in the story. OK. And um, she said, basically, I eventually moved from Philadelphia, PA to North Carolina mm -hmm. to start a new life and create some stability for my children. In doing so, I was able to build a relationship with my biological father and rededicate my life back to God. Mm -hmm. um, over time, I, learned, I started to learn who I was as a woman and the things that I could do to be a better woman and mother without the feeling of rejection, stigma, and unworthiness. I worked full time, went to school, and made a vow to wait for my husband and not have sexual relations with anyone until I get, got married. Mm -hmm. Through my waiting, I rekindled a relationship with my high school sweetie, who I've known since I was 14 years old. We married in 2001. Two months after, on December 13, 2001, I received a diagnosis of HIV. I was separated from him in less than six months after he boldly told me to, to my face that he knew he had AIDS and didn't care that he infected me with HIV. Hmm. By 2004, I was happily divorced. And so um, she talks about that. And then she talks about the fact that 
like the overcoming part. She said, overcoming the shame. I felt about the things I had to deal with over time. Plus sharing my life stories with others have allowed me to be set free from all the hurt I endured in the past. Mm -hmm. As a woman living with HIV, the stigma that has lived since the beginning of the HIV epidemic swarmed me like it did others in the HIV community. Right. In hopes of minimizing the stigma, the feeling of rejection and unworthiness, I made it a point to educate myself thoroughly so that I could help educate others. Mm -hmm. And so she talks about some of the stats here, which is um, HIV related stigma and discrimination refers to prejudice, negative attitudes and abuse directed at people living with HIV and AIDS. In 35% of countries with available data, over 50% of people report having discriminatory attitudes towards people living with HIV. Right. Stigma and discrimination also makes people vulnerable to HIV. And she said those most at risk to HIV continue to face stigma and discrimination based on their actual or perceived health status, race, social economic status, age, sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity, identity or other grounds. Mm -hmm. So she said, she took, I took a wow. stand to not only advocate for myself, but for others who experience stigma because they are different. Mm -hmm. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect and dignity, regardless of their health status, race, social and economical status, size, age, sex, um, and other differences. Wow. So. But they ended up mending their relationship, correct? She, um, I don't think that she's talked to him, but she's, she's, I've known her personally and seen her go from, like, not even have a show, associates, like, from community college, mm -hmm. and now she's pursuing her doctoral degree. Okay. So she's doing some great things. I'm not sure what happened with the man. Wow. But, yeah, she, she, <laughs> it's a, it's a powerful story. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. That is powerful. On that note, everybody, we'll be right back. The Bradley Free Clinic provides free, compassionate, and high-quality medical, dental, pharmaceutical, and preventative health care services for Roanoke Valley residents who lack the resources necessary to maintain their health and productivity using volunteer health care professionals. Check them out on their website at bradleyfreeclinic.com. Children of the Roanoke Valley just can't wait for the fun at Apple Ridge Farms Summer Academic Camp, all at no cost to qualifying children in underserved areas. This is where Apple Ridge Farm needs you. It costs $800 to send one kid to camp for three weeks. Help sponsor a child's unforgettable summer with memories to last a lifetime. Join us as we transform the lives of our community's underserved children. Visit AppleRidge.org and click on the donate button today. Apple Ridge Farm, serving the community since 1978. I matter because I have a voice that can travel to the people that don't think they matter. Tell them why they do matter. That there's something bigger out here that we are fighting for change, you feel me? Everything going on here, we can do something about it. If you don't like it, you can change it. And that's why I matter and we all matter. We're back, we're back, we're back. Such a deep subject, right? Yeah. And it was interesting because yesterday I think I learned, I didn't realize that it takes 20 minutes to get your result. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they have really um, just taken that time because it was two weeks, I know, before. Right. That you would have to <laughs> wait and discover now technology, I guess, and whatever else is 20 minutes. But with your Arthur friend, I mean, for him to boldly look her in the face and say he knew he had yeah. it, I mean, that's such a violation. Yeah. How dare you, yeah. you know? I could see if he didn't know he had it, yeah. but he yeah. knew. Yeah, and she, she even goes through the, um, like when I've heard her tell her story before, she got to the whole point of she wanted to kill him. Of course. Like run over it. Like she was, she, <laughs> it was, it was deep. And she, that's when she knows like her relationship with God saved her from not doing it. Yeah. Because she really had plotted to kill him. Yeah. And it was like, 
my kids will be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's and it just that's how she yeah. felt. Yeah. And that that is a violation, especially when you especially are, when he yeah you're married like you, yeah uh, this is your high school sweetheart that means you know me you know what right. I mean? like, and she's been with that man. She was 14. Yeah. You know? Um, it's, it's that like, is crazy. Because, you know, you put trust into people yeah. when you're with them like yeah. that. Especially, you know, those kind of relationships. Yeah. And for him just to smack you in the face, that's not even a smack in the face. I mean, you're killing me now. Yeah. You yeah. know? And no one, and that's, that's really like yesterday. I spent some time, um, one of the questions I asked the gentleman mm -hmm. was about people tell, like, disclosing this information. Because yeah. I think, I know every state, I think, has different laws mm -hmm. about this. Because mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, one day I'll have to have her definitely on, as a guest. Because she, I can't tell her story like she can. Right. But I we do, do have to have her yeah, on as a guest. I do know that she's like, I don't, if I could remember correctly, that Philadelphia didn't like she couldn't get information mm -hmm. from the state mm -hmm. on that so mm -hmm. it was deep I can't imagine no that that is deep and I can't imagine either my heart goes out to her and thank God she fought her way through it yeah. you know because that's a lot of mental because that's mental stress and better believe kinds, it all kinds of like physical like really taking somebody's life and she just hasn't she never looked at so when I met her I started looking at you know HIV differently because mm -hmm. I never knew somebody who boldly declared that know? they had it yeah mm -hmm. I, so I looked at that looked at sex differently looked at all kinds of things differently just simply because of her testimony and right. how she is and really understanding you know, a lot of the myths that you hear about mm -hmm. how you can get it and all this, like, misinformation right. is really what it is. And so I just, you know, for me, it helped me to understand that I have somebody in my life who, like, she's so, we're so close. The times when I was sick, when I was going through my health battles, it was times I couldn't drive my car because I felt so sick. She would drive me. She would, like... She was there for me, like really would be there. And exactly. I'm like, that's just the type of person she is. So that's awesome. It, it's really, really amazing. It is amazing. Wow. It is. It's truly amazing. My heart definitely goes out to her, and you know, I pray for her continued strength. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but it's awesome that she's an author and she's made positive things out of it. Yeah. You know, because it was to no fault of hers. Yeah. You know, and most people, a lot of people that do get it, it's to no fault of theirs. Yeah. You're trusting somebody that you're intimately with. Yeah. You know, drug use is a little different, yeah. but it's just crazy. And that's, that's truly your, your mom's saying your mic needs some adjustment. I don't know if you want to put it on the other side. Uh, um, thanks, mom. <laughs> thanks, Karen. Wow. It's kind of got me speechless right now. I'm sorry, everybody. It's it, it's speechless. You know, how would you deal with somebody that blatantly told you, yeah, I gave it to you. I knew I had it. Yeah, but I just didn't feel the need to, to tell you that. I mean, that's just, whew. And I've heard this story, like, I've heard, I've heard her talk about mm -hmm. this so much. And each time I get something different mm -hmm. out of it. Like, it's, and it's, <laughs> It's really amazing that she, you know, can tell tell it and just really be okay. I, I know when she first started telling it, of course, mm -hmm. she was it was more emotional for her. Right now, I think she's just at a different place with everything. But right. she's, it's it's an amazing thing to be able to speak out about it and mm -hmm. to, like you said, really. Um, she's in this book, but she has her own book too. So okay, okay. Wow, that's All the just Greensboro crazy. All the Greensboro people, <laughs> shout out to Greensboro yeah. this morning. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. And the Aggies, I saw some Aggies come in too. Mm -hmm. so, hey, Aggie time. Hey, hey. So. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So, what else is going on on this wonderful Wednesday today? Just um, really, you know, I think it's, we're, we're in summer. We're in summer. We you are. Know, so it's like now's the time. I'm looking forward to some barbecue. Next week. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Just really 
it has some roller skates on it. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like some roller blades. It got out of here. We just said happy June, and now it's almost happy July. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, time is flying. Time is flying. But yes, yeah, so on that note, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Don't bother me, I'm working. 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 Don't work it. Work it. Hello, I am Zariah Bell. What happens when stories are left out of history? This summer, stories will be put in their proper place. A community of people who built institutions such as the Clayton Memorial Clinic, Burrow Memorial Hospital, Harrison School, Addison School, and many more. We sustain streets such as Henry Street, Gainsborough Road, Patton Avenue, and Gilmer Avenue. Gainsborough Revisited will go into detail with interviews from the people who directly impacted the community of Gainsborough and Northeast. They will give the stories of how their families made an impact on the community and city. They will explain what once was and what happened to it. Churches, businesses, homes were destroyed. Land was taken for what would later be known as urban renewal. Who was responsible? What was taken? Why would this happen? Who benefited? And is it happening today? This documentary was the inspiration of Jordan Bell. Growing up in Roanoke, he wondered why the things his grandmother, aunt, and mother said was in Gainsborough aren't there now. So he started to research. Civil rights, education, law, business, medical, religion, and all have a special story in Renwick. With the help of many, those stories will be told. Thank you. We're back, we're back, we're back. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Chuck. Thanks for coming back in the room with us. Yes, I hope you're recovering well. I know you said you um, had some recovery time going on. So yeah. We've been praying for you. But we missed you being here with us. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We love our regulars and our newbies. Absolutely. And we always love input. We yes. want to hear from you guys what you think or what you have to say about subjects we talk about. So please, don't just watch us. You know, message us as well. Um, join the feed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end today with Joe Cobb. Uh, he is going to be our new vice mayor starting July 1st. Um, he has a prayer. He does a prayer every day. So I'm going to end today with that. Uh, a prayer for today. When the news is full of ways our neighbors are being excluded, may we reshape our days into finding ways to include each other. Amen. So that's what I'm leaving you with on my page today. Um, Stevie, your final thoughts for the day. That was powerful. That was powerful. And I do believe we just need more acceptance and love. Absolutely. And <laughs> that's, that's one of the things we need as well. So, you know, y'all always say what I say, which is don't have a great day, make it a great day. Why? Because you, 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 and yes, you too have the power to do so. Also, I want to um, encourage entrepreneurs and business owners to really look at the media packages. If you don't have a media package and you want to know how we can help you share and spread your message, then definitely um, inbox Tommy or Eric or myself or anybody, farmer, um, and focus radio page, always. Just get the information out. The packages are amazing, and it's time to take your life and your business to the next level of greatness. So that's all I want to say. Absolutely. Thanks, Stevie. 
Shout out to Roanoke, shout out to Philly, shout out to Jersey. And of course, if your birthday is today, happy birthday to you. Until tomorrow, everybody, God bless. Conceited, in partnership with UPL, presents our third annual Networking in the City, Grow Your Network to Grow Your Net Worth, a nonprofit event that will benefit Apple Ridge Farm and UBU Back to School Drive. Hosted by me, Vernice Bell, and my co-host is Justin Hash, Saturday, June 30th, 5 to 9 p.m. Music will be powered by the one and only DJ Kid. Dressed to impress, 21 and over, I welcome. Bring your business cards. We will have guest speakers and door prizes. At Century Plaza Park, 14 Church Avenue, Southeast Roanoke, Virginia, 24011. For more information, you can email us at networkingthecity at gmail.com or call us at 540-353-1770 or check us out on Facebook. The third annual Networking in the City Social is not always what you know, sometimes it's who you know.